Hello guys, so yeah, I didn't think that I would record any video again, but here I am. I I actually am so excited about Gwent and streaming and doing everything because I casted recently a game of the mid-season tournament and that was tons of fun and it absolutely remade my love for Gwent I really that I always appreciated and I always uh, loved it. It was it was an incredible experience. I really appreciate Gwent uh, team to le for letting me doing it. And of course, uh, my co-host co uh, Mer Mercer. It was so much fun, but it also made me uh, want to play Gwent and make some content of Gwent. And first thing when I thought was Dame. The meta was pretty diverse in the tournament, as, at least that was my initial thought when I first saw decks that I'm going to be casting, casting. But I wanted to see if it's really my first impression, maybe it was wrong, or is it truth? And luckily there was a very amazing post by Leiro, one of the participants, a great player and a great uh, content creator for various blogs that I recommend to... Uh, checking out i will link i will add the link in the description below to his channel and to what to his work so basically he made the compilation of the stats and i will show you them in a second uh, and it's absolutely incredible how great the tournament meta was so first of all i wanted to show you that there was like every single faction was present and when you look at the graph the number of uh, decks that was brought for each faction is pretty similar it's not like the three faction stands and then you have to choose a fourth one which was usually a case and it's not like one faction was brought by everyone it's pretty similar uh, we have two like factions that was brought more times but it's only three times while the lowest brought faction was nine nine people brought monster decks or nr decks it's absolutely incredible the meta in factions is super diverse you can see it you can play any faction and you can qualify to the tournament spoiler alert to the main playoff event uh, every faction was present in the deck list of people who brought it and then if you can see there are 18 different leader abilities brought which means that basically every faction in, on average had three different leader abilities used this is incredible this is this means that basically half of the uh, game or like half of the leader abilities uh, in the game were picked for the tournament. In the tournament, people tend to bring the strongest thing possible. It's like there is no space for like minimal error or like minimal being a tiny bit worse. You bring the best thing, yet people brought 18 different leader abilities. Of course, you have to remember that it's a tournament meta and there are a lot of reasons for it. For example, there are uh, some decks that you expect for your opponents to bring, so you bring counters to those decks. Or you know that something is very good, so you don't bring it to confuse your opponent or you bring something else just to surprise your opponent. But I don't think that we ever had such a diverse meta where every faction is brought, there is no clear winner, there is no clear loser, and there are so many leader abilities picked. Uh, but what I will show you that Leiro uh, went even further and he made list of all of the archetype present according to the pro players. And according to this, we actually had 28 different decks. There, are, there were 28 different decks, which on average, there are 64 decks uh, that has to be brought for the tournament. Pretty much half of them were single, like, or, or I don't know, every leader ability was, every deck was brought only twice. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Of course, for like a regular player, the decks are pretty similar. If you like, uh, for example, compare Nature's Gift with uh, Non-Devotion with Francesca, versus nature's gift versus with igni to me these decks are pretty similar there are like two three cards different but look those cards are very different you can see that there are some decks that were brought by a lot of players for example araka's queen hive and the deck list there were 
too similar to make a different archetype out of it, and same with Svalblot Medicine. Those decks tend to mm, uh, be different by like few bronzes, for example, so they not cards that define archetypes. But in general, according to like a pro player, there were like 28 different archetypes brought. This is absolutely incredible. Uh, I also wanted to look at the stats. Again, thank you very much, Leiro, for preparing this uh, document. It's actually absolutely uh, incredible because I wanted to see what is the main winner and what is the main loser of the tournament, which means we can kind of predict what we can see during the playoffs this weekend. Because remember, the second part of the tournament is coming this weekend and eight best players will play against each other. They just played. So there is probably going to be some adjustments to the decks they bring and we can kind of, ex looking at the data, check what they will bring. Uh, so as you can see, the main winner, absolutely winner, is NR, which surprisingly wins most games when they, when they go first. So if you want to go first, you just bring NR. It, it had 72% win rate ac across the whole tournament. That's a lot. And I do believe we're going to see more NR uh in the next during the next stage which is playoffs but remember it's gonna be only eight players not 16 so the number of decks will be lower and the distribution will be lower and probably the diversification of the meta will be lower as well but you can see that northern Realm, it's a clear winner and what would you say it's probably people on reddit would say oh yeah river hunters fun fact it's not yes we had uh, river hunters here and here but River Hunters had like a good win rate with 68-50%. But there are some other NR decks that are absolutely blasting the meta. And this is a Pinsir Maneuver deck. And fun fact, there are two versions of Pinsir Maneuver deck. Because there is one with Radaya Shub that won 5 out of 7 uh, games, which is a lot. And there is another one with Melitele. Uh, so this is like a shuffle deck and it won 3 out of 3 games it just won everything and then you have another Muta Generator deck that also won a game so basically the winner of NR is not even River Hunters that you would first think but it's uh, actually Melitela deck uh, or Radaya Shub deck it's just a consistency good cards decks and uh, why uh, people didn't bring Rivers well I think some people would be afraid of being easily countered by it if you go through the deck lists of all of the players you could see some cards that removed armor some cards that uh, remove a four a f uh, like low power cards so there were a lot of counters to river hunters so people wanted to avoid it the second winner but interesting winner uh, is syndicate going on blue but it's absolutely terrible when it's going second so this is a good lesson for pro players that if you bring syndicate you really want to go first uh, the biggest loser is monster which is a big surprise because uh, people brought araka swarm and it was uh, one of the most uh, visible archetype in the tournament there were like a lot of decks of this and not many changes if you see other monsters are overwhelming hunger and white frost so this is this was like the most broad archetype, uh, yet it only had 38% win rate. This is absolutely garbage. Uh, there is a high chance that this deck was highly targeted and people expected it to uh, come. And it was just not that good. A lot of people brought Squirrel to destroy Graveyard, so your Sabbath is bad. A lot of people brought like Pelar to dispel the Defender. Uh, so this deck that relies on doing nice combo with idr and then sabbat just it didn't work because people countered it and if you um, and yeah that just don't bring it and funny thing is also when you look at this kind of stats you have to be look out for some traps for example uh, nilfgaard looks kind of bad with 37 percent win rate but funny enough if you go to the decks i know that mayamon uh played with uh, let me check it where it is with imposter devo uh, devotion ball so he was the only one that brought ball 
and you only one we have brought imposter and this deck played seven times but we only with 29 percent win rate so yeah nilfgaard looking bad because it played the most uh, amount of games but we have to remember that seven out of those games was Leiro. why because Leiro in two days i think had couldn't win a single game with uh, the imposter deck he went 2-0 against his first pro or first opponent and then lost three times with uh, Nilfgaard and the next day he started with 2-0 with this his Nilfgaard again because he just really struggled with the deck so the stats are kind of screwed by this one deck but you have to remember that this also can happen to any other faction and other deck for example look here we have a precision strike deck Although five people brought it, it has a terrible win rate. So it's it's not like one person struggled, it in general struggled to win games. Uh, same with Blood Money, Non-Devotion, Bounty, Brute. It had a lot of games, but from a lot of players, so like it's a little bit different. Uh, so yeah, that's it. I just wanted to show you that the meta in this tournament was pretty fun, pretty exciting, and I want to see more of it, and I'm gonna see it in during the next, next weekend. I'm gonna link you all of the stuff from Leiro so we can dip even more. There is also a very interesting graph about like win rate be be between factions, so we can see which faction uh, counters what, basically. Uh, for example, NR was, well, good against everything, uh, but Nilfgaard countered nicely uh, Squirtle. That's why now when you have a lot of Squirtle players on the ladder, maybe it's a good idea to start playing Nilfgaard because it's a good counter to those decks. But remember, this is tournament meta. It's a little bit different than Ranked and don't just blindly copy the deck lists because sometimes the deck lists are weird because they are targeting something in the tournament. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you, I will see me in the next video very soon. Hopefully we'll see. Bye.